Don't ask me how I know. But there are members of that Celtics organization, organization that did not want the Brooklyn Nets. Who do you think he's talking about? Players or coaches or front office? Who do you think he was referring to? Players. I mean, I think Stephen A is a player guy. I think he talks to the players. And so now who that is specifically? I don't know. Maybe Tatum. I mean, he's buddies with Kyrie. You know, so maybe there's like an emotional thing there for him too. We all know how good Duran is. So, you know, and if that's true, that should worry you. And I think front office, because I don't know. I think even if the players were to lose this series, yeah, they'd be butthurt about it, and rightfully so for a few days, but are they really going to be bothered by it? The organization, Wick, Brad Stevens, I mean, they can't lose to this team. There's, Do you think there's any chance it was Stevens? Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, maybe. There's a chance, but I, yeah, so I tend to think it's more front office. More front office. The players... They're not going to lose any sleep. Right. You, you will. We will. You know, you hate Kyrie. The front office maybe hates Kyrie. That's going to be a tough thing for them to swallow if Kyrie beats you. I don't think Tatum's going to care. I think at the end of the day, most of the players aren't going to care either. Smart would. You know, for all that I've given Smart, the guff I've given him before, and rightfully so, I, he does care. So I think he'd be hurt by it. Certain role players would be. But, like, again, Tatum, I think he really, I mean, I don't think he'd be bothered by it that much. So, what about Horford? I don't know, Maz. Well, what, Maz, what are you cooking on over there? No, what are you no, nothing. I just think Horford's a veteran guy. He knows what wins in that league. He knows how good Durant is. And if he's talking to Stephen A, there's a, also the fact that he's a veteran makes it more likely that he knows Stephen A. Like, I don't know if they have any relationship at all, but he could be one that say, well, you got to be careful there. I mean, you know, Durant alone, those two guys can put, you know, 50 up on us. And, and wasn't... Wasn't part of the plan initially with that whole thing in the Hamptons to get Horford and Durant? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, when they signed Horford, they thought they were getting Durant too. Didn't you? He was the bait, basically. Like, there was, like, there was, I don't know, I can't remember what the time frame was. A couple hours. It happened in the same day. Yeah. Fourth where, of July, I thought. Yeah, it was, yeah, where they sign Horford and they're in the Hamptons and the plane's taking off, and you're sitting there going, holy crap. Yeah, right. They might have just done this. So I'm just wondering if, you know, maybe there's some sort of connection there between the two, and Horford knows how good the guy is. So, I, and I'm, I'm reaching here. I'm, I'm not, I don't have any inside info. I'm reaching, but I think Stephen A is a player guy. Well, me too. Uh, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't be that afraid of him. I mean, again, I, I'm reading from uh, Washburn in the Globe. Irving and Durant combined for 59 points, shot 21 of 31 from the floor. I'm going to add here, I saw this elsewhere, that Irving and Durant scored or assisted on 80% of the Nets' points. So by that you know, measure, they were responsible for 80% of the points. So it's hard to get much more out of those guys than you got last night. And they beat a really middling Cleveland team by seven points at home. And that, to me, tell, that's the story. You, you should beat that team. That's what the Nets are. The, 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 the talent of those two are self-evident and is really not even worth repeating. I, of course, they're phenomenal players. It's not a great team. And so I still like the Celtics in this series. Uh, Brian in Rhode Island on the Celts. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, yeah. If I were Tatum, I would love this path in this road because if you beat Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, then the Bucks, then the Heat, and then Phoenix, you prove you're the best player. You get all the accolades. You led the team. He did everything. He's the star. Well, if I were him and all he wants is act, if he all he wants are accolades, isn't this the perfect opportunity to show it? it? I'm the best player in the NBA. It's me. It is, but let me tell you something, Brian. If they had an easy path and an easy road, and they were facing lambs and it got all sorts of breaks, and he won a championship and had a ring on his finger, he'd still have proven it. They don't. You don't go back and parse through it. And I'll just tell you, you know, the Bucks played the Atlanta Hawks in the Eastern Conference Finals, and. Uh, like, no one goes back and says, well, he didn't have to go through LeBron, blah, blah, blah. And he didn't have to go through LeBron or any of the great players in the. He didn't go through LeBron. He didn't go. He did go through Durant, I guess. But no one does it. If you win a championship, it's all, it's all over. It doesn't matter who you've played or what your road was. You've got the ring on your finger and should shut everybody up. Between Durant and Irving, between their points and assists, they account for 80% of the Nets' points. I mean, yeah, I, it's not exactly balanced. I thought Seth Curry was going to be a really good ad there. Sit in the corner and hit open threes. I how often did, how many misses did he have last night? What did he finish with? I think him and Rodgers and uh, one of the other bench guys combined for like nine points. He's been bad lately. Non, He's had a bad ankle for a while. Non-factor. You know, Brown was their third guy last night, but you know what can you expect from him? Does he even average ten points a night?
So he's right around that. It's just not enough. Yeah, he's right. He's playing a little over his head, but he's right around 10. All right, 617-779-0985. We got uh, Jim in Ipswich. Go ahead, Tim. Hey, what's up, Commander? I'm sorry, Jim. What do you got, Jim? Uh, hey, so, Mike, I agree with you. I, Kyrie's going to come in here, and every time he touches the ball, he's going to get his ass booed, and it's going to get to him. It's going to get to him, and this is Tatum's chance to show you're the, one of the top five players in the league. You played great against Durant in the last game. Take over the series and prove you're the man. Celtics in five. Okay. Just the, the Tatum thing. Tatum I, I should be motivated to prove that he's an MVP guy and a, an elite, elite, elite guy. And that, that, I think, will be his motivation. I don't know that he's particularly motivated to beat Kyrie Irving like you want him to be. Like the fans want these Celtics players to be to hate Kyrie and to hate the Nets like the old days where, you know, you hated Lambeer and Bird hated Lambeer as much as you did, right? And Parrish and those guys hated Lambeer and Isaiah and that team as much as you did. And it was great. It worked. It, it all fit together. Uh, and they hated, uh, the, they hated the Lakers as much as you, the players did. It doesn't work that way anymore. No. But last year when I, I just want to repeat myself. Last year, when you lost to the Nets in game five of the playoffs, your players stayed behind and partied with them in New York. Do you know, Jimmy, do you know who specifically stayed? Like, do we have a list of guys that stayed and who stayed and who, who did go home with the team? Do we know? I don't remember the VIP list for that night. But either way, like, just think of that. Can you imagine back in our day, Maz, to play that game? Bird hanging out with Isaiah. Bird and Isaiah go out after the game seven? No. Or Parrish and Lambeer? Go sit down. Like, no. No, no shot. Please, no. But I'll tell you, I'm, you know, no, it, it, it doesn't exist that way anymore. No, so Tatum does not have that sort of, you know, edge as it pertains to Kyrie. But I'll tell you what, I, I want him to be more consumed with Durant. Because, I, you know, that is sort of his mirror. Yes. Right. But, but it's not on a personal level. Right. That's right. It, it, it's different. Like, again, just to equate it to if the older generation, but Bird and those guys, they wanted to beat Detroit. They wanted to, they wanted to win the game. And it's not that Tatum wants to lose, but I think that what Tatum really wants is to establish his reputation as being the guy. And that's what he wants. It's not, I don't want to beat the guy. I just want everyone to know that. I'm the man too. Yep. And I'm on that level. And that's what that's what his motivation is and that's you know it it should net out to be the same thing. It's still good for you that he's motivated by something but it's just different. It's not what you want. It, it's not what you want as a fan. You want to beat the Nets and beat Kyrie and take these guys down and I don't think your players feel the same way. No, look, the one thing that's good, last year I thought that game Tatum had against him when he put the 50 up was eye-opening. He was awesome in that game. And I know they get their asses kicked in the series. But at the time, it was, was it 2-1 to one at the time? Or 3-1? to one? I don't remember. It was 2-0, uh, I think. Yeah, and then they made it 2-1. Okay, so it made it a little bit of a series, at least temporarily. And then the game here, again, when they, you know, the, the regular season game a few weeks ago. When they came in here, Tatum elevated in that game. He was a force. So, and let me tell you, now maybe Jalen Brown is a little different. Jalen Brown and Kyrie had a thing. And as I've said before, Jalen Brown has a lot of things. He's your clubhouse Supreme Court, uh, Supreme Court justice there in, in the law. Club, clubhouse lawyer. He's, he's graduated beyond lawyer to Supreme Court justice status. But I think he and Kyrie did have a thing. So maybe Brown is a person, you know, I'd like to beat that guy. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see it. Maybe Smart on some level, too. Chris Mannix kept mentioning this last night about Brown and Smart being personally motivated to beat the Nets and beat Kyrie because they what they had a personal thing with them. I'd love to see it. I just, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, Kyrie, look, he should be a guy that they can exploit on defense, too. So, like, if Big they, time. Yeah, if they want to seek him out and expose him, they can do that. Tom in the car on uh, the South. Go ahead, Tommy. Uh, hey guys, um, I think my conspiracy is is that Stephen A. Smith talked to uh, Danny Ainge, who still has friends in the in the front office. Why? How, why Danny? I just the way he said, uh, "Don't ask me how I know." Okay, I don't know why that would just lead my to my opinion. Yeah, okay, well, Danny's kid, I was, you know, Austin is still here, obviously. Does Danny A. and Stephen A. feel like no? Feel like a match? No. 
I mean, not necessarily. No, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it just it's probably players. He's a player guy or an agent guy, and it's really not that. It's really not that hot of a take. Yeah, the other thing with Stephen A. and I shouldn't overlook this either is assistant coaches, right? A lot of those guys are former players that he covered. So I wouldn't rule out assistant coaches either. In fact, the more I think about it, maybe that's really the answer. But because what player is going to like, you know, is is uh, you know Grant Williams going to sit there saying, "Oh, I wish we didn't get Brooklyn." Eh. But I could see an assistant coach saying it. Yeah, I I, I guess that's true. But they're they're overrating it, or they're just uh, they should have more confidence in themselves. They're the better team.